Hi, y'all. So, wanted to come live. I know it's been a little while, so I wait for a few more people to get on so I can begin. But the topic is self sabotage. Okay. Too many people, too many people self sabotage themselves because they don't even realize that they're against themselves. When you speak, it comes out. People can tell you don't like yourself. People can tell you're not used to a good relationship or getting what you want in one. So uh, a lot of times telltale signs are you talking down about yourself, you not being able to accept compliments, you not thinking that you best or you know you not having many standards as soon as a man hears that sees that or you know gets that um indication from you they act accordingly so a lot of you ladies self-sabotage yourself by you know being a certain way you also sabotage yourself by giving people the benefit of the doubt and believing words instead of actions you also self-sabotage yourself by talking yourself out of wanting better. So many women have talked themselves out of wanting better or doing better or saying something is hard and that they can't do it and that they fell off and then they're going to start over a, you know, this, this week or whatever. To me, you don't start over a level up. It's a life change. You can't start it over. You just have to continue and keep moving. You know, it's not a, it's not like a diet. It's not like a, um, <laughs> You know, it's not that when you decide to change as a person and how you want to be treated and how you want to present yourself to the world, that is a life decision, a life change. It's not a diet. OK, it's not a diet from Dusty's. That's not what it is, because a lot of a lot of time <clears throat> and money will be wasted if, you know, let's say you get um, new clothes you know, consultations, um, new makeup, and then you go right back to the same dusty dude that you lost everything to, you know, that is self-sabotage. You don't go back. Oh, but I love him. Oh, but he, he, he got better. He got a better paying job. Okay. That's not the same. That's not what it's going to take. Um, so self self-sabotage is also moving backwards. If you keep moving backwards, you're self-sabotaging your entire life. And also when you self-sabotage in dating, you know, going back to a man that didn't think you were worthy at first is also self-sabotage because even though you may have leveled up, you know, in two or three weeks. And he likes your new wig and your new makeup. He still has to learn his lesson or gotten enough money to, you know, let you stay home, but you still go back. That's self-sabotage once again. OK, so. Um, <laughs> well, that's good. If they change 100 percent, then you did then you did the right thing. But a lot of women go back after like two weeks and they nothing has changed and then they're stuck again. So if you're one of the lucky women that um, did make a change and things went from 50-50 to 100, then that is really good. Um, I'm sure they learned their lesson. I'm sure your standards stay high and you don't move backwards as far as how you uh, expect to be treated. So that's good. Um, <laughs> you went from sensitive you went from sensitive to insecure, you're heartbroken. Okay. Those words are weak words. Okay. Why? Those words should only be used to manipulate people, not for real. Okay. Um, you're not heartbroken. You're not insecure. What you are is defeated. Um, because you gave those words to yourself. So you can't give those words to yourself. You are not insecure. You are not heartbroken. You temporarily feel like you're not enough and you are temporarily sad. That's it. So take all those words and throw them in the trash and start over and say, 
I'm doing, I'm going to do better this time. And I'm not going to talk with self-defeating words. Okay. Cause you know, no one can break your heart unless you l allow them to. So I wouldn't even say it's a heartbreak. I would say it's a lesson that I've learned to never, ever repeat again. Okay. So you didn't get heartbroken. You learned a valuable lesson. Okay. If you, if you say you're heartbroken, it means you think something is broken within you. And that's not true. What's broken is your ability to see that lesson and learn from it. Okay. So move forward. Stop moving backwards. Eh, right. Um, my man has money, but he is a Scrooge. Um, then he might as well be broke. Because if he's not generous, then he his money is not useful to you. No emotion, straight, smooth sailing, no more emotions outburst. Yeah, so many I was watching this movie last night and I wanted to like literally slap this person because they were over emotional and because of it, they died. <laughs> I got in a car accident because they were just so over emotional. Like that stuff can literally kill you. <laughs> it can raise your blood pressure. It can get you distracted. It can get you in a car accident. It can get you, you know, shot because people are so annoyed. So it's almost like it's a whole different men mental state. It's like you're mentally ill temporarily. So like sometimes people that act like that just, they need to get shot with a tranquilizer dart. That's what I feel. Okay. And <laughs> I really do. But some of y'all are out of control. Um, just stop overreacting. Those men don't care about your emotions anyway. And the dumber you act, the less they care. The faster they want to get away. So stop all of that. Okay. <laughs> it's just true. And I know some people on here will argue up and down about if you don't feel emotions, A, B, C, and D. But are they where they want to be in their lives? Probably not. Okay, so you can, emotions are basically how you feel and that's it. You can feel them all day, every day, but it's how you react to them. Okay, so if you want to feel sad, you can sit there and no one has to know. But if you are going to react and let the world know by acting a fool, then that's when things go wrong. Okay. So you can feel emotions. You just can't react to them. If you want to be in control of them, you have to think. Then you react according to what's best. Okay. Now, when it comes to life or death, when it comes to survival mode, then you react. But if it's not life or death, and it's not survival mode and you're not about to die and you're not about to, you know, you know, get taken advantage of in, in a violent way, then you need to think. OK, but when it comes to life or death, then you go with your instinct and you move quick. But if not, hold it back because you can't take away. You can't take words back. You know. So make sure you're thinking like that. Um, so a lot of women self-sabotage themselves by reacting instead of keeping calm and thinking. Okay? This is a weakness with a lot of women. And you may think you're a strong woman. It takes a strong woman to control her emotions. You are weak. If you, you're a weak woman. I don't care how many jobs, degrees, and you know things that you can do. If you can't control your emotions, you're weak. Up. So, mm -hmm, I, the strongest women are the ones who can control emotion because they're not able to be manipulated as easy. They're not able to have buttons pushed very easily. 
they're not able to be triggered easily. Okay, so they're not able to be confused, tricked, or made a fool of easily either. That's why you got to get them in order. Mm hmm. She, what about being called aloof as a woman? Just because you're not emotional does not mean you have to be boring. Okay. Because <laughs> if you're being called aloof, just, you know, fake it. It's like, oh, baby, that's so funny. I'm not aloof. I'm just really, you know, not affected by certain things. It takes a lot to get to me. So that's it, you know. I'm learning, but my emotions get strong, sometimes overwhelming. Well, you can't let it get that way. That's almost like, you know, if you can't control that, it's going to ruin a lot of stuff in your life. Stuff you could have had, the life you could have had, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when you look back on it a couple weeks later, it was stupid in the first place and you lost more than you gained. Um, I learned to be proactive instead of reactive. Good for you. Who angers you controls you. That's so right, exo goddess. Yeah, that's how men try to control their women by making them angry and react so that they can react. Mm -hmm. Um. Hold on. How do I get over a hurtful experience? I'm sorry. look. Mm -mm. Stop investing emotionally. That's how you get over it. You never invest emotionally unless you have a ring on your finger, a deed in your hand. Then you don't need to be investing emotionally ever. OK, you are out just to have a good time and for fun. If they want to commit to you and give you something in your hand physically. That is worth something that benefits you. Then you get emotionally invested. Until then, you don't. It's your fault. You're depressed because you gave more than you received. Stop giving more than you receive. Okay? Don't give emotions away anymore unless someone has given you what you want in life. Okay? Y'all are just playing with people thinking they're going to do something and they never had the intention to do it in the first place. And so you're going off of words instead of actions. Mm -hmm. Um, you're single until you're married. Exactly. Mm hmm. My husband wanted me to help friends out this weekend and I felt, I feel like it wouldn't benefit me. What's your opinion on friends getting your help? I feel like it could be a waste of time. What do you mean help friends? <laughs> For me, if he not there helping friends, he needs to go help friends first. Is he helping them? Because if not, then I'm not doing nothing either. Um. And I better get something out of it, like a gift card or something. Dinner, drinks. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Exactly. If you're not happy, don't do it. Um. So stop self-sabotaging y'all y'all self. You know why? Because one day people are going to notice that you're doing what you're doing and they're going to tell you exactly what your problem is. And you'll have no one to blame but yourself. And so you know, that's it. You have a hard time accepting compliment because I don't know if they're lying or just want something. Accept them anyway. Okay, 
accept them anyway and still don't give them what they want if they ended up wanting something, you know? Think about a child. A child never, ever rejects a compliment. They'll either say, I know, or say they like your hair too or whatever, or they'll just say thank you like their mother taught them. That's it. Stop overanalyzing stuff. Accept it if it was given. Stop pushing stuff away. That's how people push their uh, prosperity and abundance away, by not accepting it. Okay? Um, so always accept it and don't care. Just like, oh, thanks. You know, stop overthinking stuff. That's what y'all need to get out of your head sometimes and just say, oh, thanks. Okay? Um, I love your wisdom. You speak truth. Thank you, girl. Um, Mm-hmm. It's all about me, Mimi. <laughs> all right. How Alpha Male Strategy says it's all in his videos to keep a woman emotional to control them. Yeah. And that's why you can't control a woman who's not emotional. You know. So if you if you're not emotional, you have most of the control. So you have a question and you want to know if I can help you with this about dating. What's your question? Thank you, Tori Rose. I appreciate that. One, one, one. Um, we need to work on our mm -hmm. So my thing is, and, and also, a lot of women also find a reason to argue with men all the time for no reason because they feel like if that man is emotionally invested in them through arguing, that they feel some type of connection. But men don't want to argue with you. They don't. They don't think that. You know, that's that's not what they want to do. They don't want to argue with you. Okay. Um. They just want to be at peace. They want to know everything is good. Everything is balanced. You know, you're not trying to get them to feel all emotional and in their feelings with you. Because uh, some people aren't comfortable with sharing every detail of their life and how they think and how they feel at the same time and about each other. That's too much, you know. So stop doing all that crap. You don't have to talk about everything to a man. That's not what he's for. Okay? Thank you. Talk about it to your friend, to your mom. You know, let just talk about stuff that you and him both have in common. And that's how you need to connect. Not all this over-emotional crap. Okay? It's not helping you. <laughs> If you're upset about something, then you don't really react. You just act accordingly, you know. So let's say he doesn't call you or text you back. Great. Don't keep texting him and don't call him again until he realizes that he's basically told you that he wants to communicate less when he doesn't text back. Basically, what he's telling you is, I don't want to talk to you this damn much, lady. Stop texting me. I don't feel like answering your every text and call. Get a life. That's what he's telling you. Okay? And if you keep texting and keep talking and keep talking, it means I don't have a life. You are my life. All I think about is you. Why don't you answer the phone? I'm desperate. Please pick me. Where are you? That's all that is. That's all you're telling him. It doesn't even matter what you texted or or anything. So stop doing that. Um, don't ever call him first. Let him call you first. Unless there's something you need to tell him. Like if you're married, like, oh, bring this home. That's it. You know? 
What if he is texting too much? Then he's trying to keep tabs on you. Okay. <laughs> and he doesn't have a life. <laughs> um, what if what if he's more attractive and 10 years older than me? I really like him and super rich. If a man is more attractive than you, then not a good combination. <laughs> okay. What do you do when an ex who claims he wants to change for you? Um, give him a list of changes you need made. And when he has checked them all off, then you give him a chance. Okay. Give them a list, not one thing, but a list. I need you to make this much money. I need you to have your own place, your own car, your own ABC. And get him together. Make him, give him a list of the men you actually want and see if he can turn into it for you. And maintain it for three months because people can fake it for, for like a couple of months. If he can maintain all these life changes for three months, he will be back. Guarantee you he won't do it. Mm -hmm. And if he does, then, then go back because he, he did it for you or, you know, because he, he really wants you. Mm -hmm. Why do I start thinking negative once the guy starts liking me and I and think negative, then he's gone? Because you are self-sabotaging. You are trying to um, protect yourself from being hurt because you've already emotionally invested. If you already emotionally invested, you're going to start thinking the worst scenarios because he hasn't, you see? So stop emotionally investing and you won't even worry about it. Um, You always sabotage your dates. Oh, sorry. What? That song by Erica Badu, Fall in Love, Your Funeral Just Came to Mind. <laughs> That's hilarious. What to do if you suspect that he is cheating with his ex that he sees at work every day? Um, first of all, I don't even want to get into that. Like, where does he work? Why does his ex work with him? Does he have a career or a job? If he has a job, I'm dumping him. I need a career man, okay? Unless he has a career, I'm dumping him. So unless his unless his ex has the same career as him, like he can change positions easily if he has a career. But if he has a job, it's hard. So I'm not dealing with anybody with a job. If he has a career, great. If he if he, his girlfriend works in the same exact career field, then Mo, all men are going to give what, you know, most guys may take the opportunity or they may not, depending on how they feel about you at that time. Um, And what's being offered? Who knows? But I wouldn't trust it. Have you ever attracted, have you ever been attracted to white men? Um... I mean, there's cute white guys out there. I mean, look look on TV. There's cute white guys. There's cute guys in every race. There's cute guys in every race. Okay. Who got here? But I see pick me comments. All right. I texted him when there was a death in my family and wanted to talk. He didn't respond back. Because that's bad news. Who wants to talk about death? Except for me. I mean, that I like that. But I don't want to comfort you. Basically, you were calling... For him to comfort you. And he wasn't comfortable with that. You know, you, you're you emotionally investing in him. And he was not that emotionally invested into you. To talk to you like that. So you don't text anybody when someone dies. You text your family. Okay. You don't date females with weaves. Oh, I'm so glad. Because they probably wouldn't be able, you know, to thrive with someone like you. <laughs> so thanks for doing us a favor too many what 
right. I'm thinking too, too hard to get away from my kid's father. I left him, but he keeps coming. It's been over 10 years. He doesn't have a career and won't keep a job longer than a year. He works for himself. Okay. No one can keep coming back unless you allow them back in. Okay. So he can't come back unless you say, okay. Mm hmm. How do I emotionally detach myself from a partner that isn't reciprocating it back? Get another one. Have two. Date more than one person at a time. Get a get a hobby. Put your passion into something else that's going to benefit you. You know, spend less time with him. Spend more time with something that will benefit you. Mm -hmm. Weaves are a sign of weakness. Oh, you must wear one then. Where's your wig then? Oh, this is not a weave. It's a wig. Get it together. <laughs> Get a plan B man just in case. True. You make a million a year. Are you on my YouTube? Well, then how come you haven't donated? <laughs> Actions speak louder than words. I don't go by words, baby. You make a million. Put me about uh, 1500 in the in the comments, a woman asking questions. Um, because you talk too much, or they're hiding something. Probably both. <laughs> donate it to more weaves. It's a wig. No, it's not donating to more weaves. It's putting your money where your mouth is. That's all. <laughs> Shira, you look beautiful. Thank you. How can I get? A CEO, <laughs> um, a CEO of a corporation or a company. You date. Um, I don't know. A lot of them are on dating sites, so you could go to like MillionaireMatchmaker.com if you want a real CEO, like ones that make real money, not the fake ones on <laughs> Facebook that have a um, a studio near bathroom oh thank you i can't pronounce your name because it's an asian but thank you for the donation i appreciate it how do i start this what topic is everything good uh -huh. so um remember that Self-sabotaging yourself also means listening to men or pick-me chicks that can't compete with you or can't offer you anything unless you look like you just rolled out the bed um, from being uh, in prison for three years. OK. That because that's what a lot of the, these uh, men want you to look like, like you're in prison. Go watch Orange is the New Black. That's how they want you to look. Okay. So just because they want you to look like that doesn't mean you need to. Don't self-sabotage yourself by changing for a man. You stay exactly the same. And if they are uncomfortable with it, let them adjust to it or change or leave and get you another one. You don't ever have to change for a man. Um, unless you're changing benefits you, not him. Mm -hmm. Why are you wearing a wig? You are attractive. Take it off now. Give me some money. I'll take it off. Put put 1500 since you make a million dollars, and I'll take off this wig just for you. Okay. None of these sisters want to deal with you. So why are you here? He's trying to get attention because Pigmisha uh, is at work right now, obviously. He at home babysitting, obviously. <sighs> Ooh, that's that if he cried. He cried because he couldn't get none from you. <laughs> I, sh I sound like a good topic. I like. Okay, so stop self-sabotaging yourself by dealing with pick-me friends and um, especially 
because they will help you self-sabotage. They will talk you out of all things to help yourself. Okay, so stop hanging around them. Um, men who don't like weaves have low self-esteem, I know, because they can't they can't deal with the competition. Mm -hmm. We already know their psychology. Mm -hmm. I did say pick Misha. <laughs> You want African, I'm. Um, you want African women to liberate themselves from silly painted down Babylon. Okay, we will when, when we be, all become millionaires and have everything we want. Then we'll do what we want. How about that? But until then, I'm getting this money. Okay, when <laughs> I'm do like my mom. My mom used to wear wigs and makeup. So she opened a bunch of businesses, got paid, bought her some land, and then she took it all off, and now she's a she's a um, natural woman. Now, when I get my money like that, then I'll take it all off, and I won't care a thing about what people think I look like. You know why? Because I've already gotten everything I need in this world, and I'm not sitting here struggling on Section 8 in an apartment, shopping at Whole Foods when I can't even afford to uh, put gas in my car, trying to be uh, conscious and stuff, but still broke. Okay. I'm not going to do all of that. But when I get my money, I'll do whatever I feel like doing. You know? So let me get my money. Let me see. <laughs> but if you're, you can't, you can't dictate and you can't make people think like you. We have, we have strategy. Okay. There's a strategy. There is a strategy to the game, and you must understand that. We are playing chess, not checkers, okay? It's called chess, not checkers. You, if you ever read any type of book on self-mastery, um, any type of book on business, on war, on strategy, you're always going to see how to get the most out of a situation. And it's not... The way you're thinking. Okay. And that's self-sabotaging in itself. You are trying to accomplish something. You cannot create a situation where you look like the maid. You look like you've been in prison. If you're trying to get ahead and get powerful uh, connections and money in the world so that then then you can turn around and do whatever you choose to do with someone um, who can listen to you because you have something behind you. You know, you have something that you've accomplished in life. You got um, what they want. You know, no one's going to listen to you if you're not where they want to be. So you really don't have any power if you have no power, then no one listens to you. If no one listens to you, then you're voiceless. So, right. Hi. I don't need 10K because you ain't got 10K. I got 10K in, don't even bother. Like, I would rather wear wigs. Your little money can't do nothing for me. Okay. I have a first date with a wealthy potential. He's a leg man. Should I go covered up but wear a short? Or plunge spaghetti strap with his wig? Show him some legs, but cover this up. You feel nervous and you don't know what to do in a bar by yourself? Look sexy and mysterious. Wear a costume, not like a real costume. Oh, thank you, Aristocat. Here is my help. Help me study if he's still a Dusty. What? If he helps me study, is he still a Dusty? Thank you. Um, If he helps you study and he's helping you, that's a nice friend. I would say he's a good friend. Okay. See what, you know, and if he's a friend. Right. But thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Michaela Pink says to say uh, to stay offline to meet. I think you can meet somebody anywhere. 
But here's the thing. People are more picky online. Okay. They got all these different women that they think they can have, but they probably can't. And so they're just scrolling through and they're being extra picky online. In person, people aren't extra picky at all. You know, plus there's a, a better chemistry in person. So if you're not super beautiful or look better than everyone else online, or you think you can compete with everybody else online, then it's better to meet people in person because you can actually flirt with them for real, not just in words. So that's how I feel about it. I think it's it's easier to do it in person. That's what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Self-sabotaging in the dating world, um, talking too much, giving out too much information, feeling low self-esteem, having no confidence, talking down about themselves, not being able to um, level up past their type as well. You know, a lot of people stay stuck in their type and their type is no good for them. So if you, if you keep sticking to a certain type and you know they don't work out, that's also self-sabotaging. Mm-hmm. You staying on the phone for hours when y'all just met? Yep, that's self-sabotaging. They're already going to be sick of you before they see you again. So stay off that phone. Um, dating online can get creepy, though. Exactly, because you don't know who it is. They could be lying or catfishing. Um, right. You got to be. You have to stay conscious. Everything is a strategy. If you open your mouth and say something, it must have been strategized before you talked. OK, it must have been ran through your mind before you say it. If you can't do that, then pause. OK. You want to see young sisters to see that they are naturally beautiful. That's fine. You know, that's fine. But we need to get naturally. Um, paid first. You know what I mean? We need to get naturally paid because that's what's important at this time because it gives you freedom to do what you please okay so make sure you understand that it's not about mm -hmm. let's make up look look then go start a channel called natural beauty price cost is zero why don't you go start your youtube channel called just got out of prison look okay <laughs> have fun women who don't like a lot of women that don't like um a lot of women that are like all natural. Some of them look exactly like a man. You can't tell the difference. I don't know. I've seen some ladies who are all natural and I thought they were either a, a lesbian or a man. I can't tell the difference. So stop with all of that. I can't. I can't tell. Men also like feminism, femin femininity. They don't like a man looking woman. OK. And a lot of times. Natural women look just like a man in the face. Okay? Because you can't tell the difference. I'm not go I I don't I will wear makeup till the day I die. I'm not gonna be mistaken for a man. <laughs> not for not for wearing zero makeup. I'd rather be mistaken for a man wearing a bunch of makeup than zero makeup. See, that's the difference. <laughs> I can't, you know. You have a sugar daddy that was taking really good care of you, but he was married. A good guy found me. We've been together for eight months, but he's not big help financially. Well, good. This means two different things to people. You know, for me, good means financial help uh, and decent. That's the top three. Decent, financial help, and, you know, tolerable. Right. How many chemicals do you ladies have on? Uh, I have on deodorant, perfume. What else? 
whatever's in makeup, I have all of those on. And guess what? I haven't been to the doctor in many, many, many years for any type of illness. So I guess I'm good. <laughs> oh, girl. Trainees wear a lot of makeup and they have more men than you. I promise you. Daisy. <laughs> Your man will, will chase a trainee right now if they walk by and they have to look at you versus them. And you know it's true. She wrote, how often should I dress up with sexy lingerie for your husband every time he gives me what I want? Um, make, make sure you don't overdo it because then it becomes like nothing. Okay? Do it on special occasions. If you do it too much, it means nothing. You might as well not do it at all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Spread that out. Maybe once a month. Or unless he's buying you the lingerie. If you buy it, go put it on, girl. Um, mm -hmm. So many chemicals, they damage the ozone layer. Oh, so does the solar flare from the sun, but we ain't gonna think we ain't gonna talk about that. So does the electromagnetic frequency from the sun. My little makeup ain't gonna do nothing. Um, let's see, self-sabotage. Toy Doll says, we are all natural under our makeup and wigs. That's so true. We are. We are on the same frequency. That's right. You don't know how to break up with your Dusty, so I just blocked him and moved on. He left flowers at my job. I gave them to my mom. I feel bad, but I deserve better. Yes, you do. If there wasn't no money in a car with that flower, with them flowers, then you did the right thing. Right. And I don't mean to sound evil, but what use is a man if he can't push you to the next level or if he can't benefit you, if he can't make your life any easier, then what use is he? You know, and I really feel that way because it's not beneficial to you. So what are you wasting time for? Just like if um, if you weren't giving sex to a man, he wouldn't have a use for you, okay? Black people get more affected by toxic chemicals because they meant to lose a few of them. You can go write a blog, baby. Have you and James thought about doing a class or writing a book, such valuable messaging and manifesting, becoming the architect of one? No. I've already written a book, two books. So they're ebooks. Maybe James will when he retires. <laughs> I don't know. It's when black people lose their connection to nature and the sun. That is a problem. That's not a problem. Do you know how many uh, gold diggers are on vacation every year on the beach in tropical weather? Do you know how many don't have to work and they can go outside at any time and do whatever they choose to do? <laughs> okay. You, you're not looking at the big picture. Okay. What if he's helping you to get to the next level, but he's not giving you money? Then he ain't helping you get to the next level. Okay. Look, it. here's my thing. And I'm going to be 100,000 million percent honest with you. Women, if you know that you cannot get a man to pay, to give you any type of money, 
because of the way you look and the standards you have, then do the best you can do. You know what I'm saying? Do the best you can do with whatever man you got. Because a lot of women want to do level up. They want to get them a rich man. They want to do A, B, C, and D, but they're not willing to put the work into themselves or change their mentality. So when women ask me questions like, is, you know, is he a good man if he's not doing A, B, C, and D? He's a good man by your standards, not by mine. Okay. So if he's good for you and you feel like you're winning, then great. Keep it. But for some people, that's not even acceptable. So if you think it's acceptable, you don't need my approval. Okay. And that's something that you guys need to realize. You don't need my approval. If it works for you, if it's the best you could do, then keep it moving. You know, keep, keep, keep going in that direction. Not everyone is going to have the exact same success rate. So if a man paying attention to you is winning, then great. If a man who's helping you study is beneficial and um, miraculous to you, then great. If a man who is helping you to the next level but can't offer you any money, then great. I, I don't know what the standards are in y'all's relationships, but if you are happy and smiling every night when you go to bed and you're satisfied in life, then go by that. Okay. Cause so many women are comparing themselves to other women that they cannot even compete with. So you can't do that unless you're willing to do the work in order to um, get that type of lifestyle, then you can't compete with it. That's just how it is. So, Only you can define success. Yes. So the elders used to say, if you're a spitting, if you're splitting legs, you better not be splitting bills. <laughs> exactly. You need to know what standards you should have. Um, I don't like you need to look in the mirror and decide what you can get a man to do with what you currently look like. First of all, if you don't think you can get a man to do much with what you currently look like, then either A, change it for the better so that you can, or B, figure out what you can get a man to do with what you currently look like. Mm -hmm. Standards represent what you will take and what you won't take. If you want a man to be a provider, then you don't take Anything less than being provided for. That's just that simple. And if it means dumping him and moving on to find someone who can, that's what you got to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Unknowing your core values are important to know what you really are about and what you're looking for. Standards and values are totally different. So. This not giving sex in a relationship make him like you more even after six months. Um, no, but then he's probably already cheating or trying to do something else. But, you know, that only works for the first couple of months. But you can't say that you're not going to give it to him. You have to keep lying and saying you will. So he has hope. Okay. You're too honest in this comment section. <laughs> How can I stop feeling insecure and putting myself down even though I'm attractive? Stop. Instead of when you go to put yourself down, give yourself a compliment instead. When you go to um, do something negative towards yourself, replace it with something positive instead. Stop yourself mid-thought before you even open your mouth. 
and say the exact opposite of what you were going to say so that it's a compliment. You know, you can choose either negative or positive. You don't you don't have to say bad things about yourself. And if you start, then change it into something good. You know, uh, everything is free will. You uh, you know what you're doing and you're self-sabotaging yourself. So stop yourself mid-thought or mid-sentence and change it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I know a lot of insecure women do that. And they don't think that other people think that they're beautiful and they don't think that they're well-received. It's because you don't think you're beautiful and you don't think you're well-received. So you're putting out that to other people and they, all they do is pick up what you put out. They can see all of those things in you. And that's why it's self-sabotage because you're in control of that. You're definitely in control of that. What do you think about the dead of Kim Porter? I'm, I was, I was going to do a video about her on my other channel because there's a lot more to it than y'all think. But uh, I'm going to probably do a video and break that down in the channel because it's not for this channel. Um, I self-sabotage all my relationships. How do I stop? Be in control of your own emotions and go in with a goal. Like my goal is to get this man to pay all my bills, to do A, B, C, and D, and to do A, B, you know, to do that. If you haven't accomplished all those goals, then you don't focus on anything else until all those goals are met. Have a goal. Mm-hmm. What is the demonic stuff in the background? Oh, you mean like the skull? It's, I don't know how a skull can be demonic, but if you look up the word demonic, it means indwelling spirit or genius. So get your, get your vocabulary together and then come back and ask me again. <laughs> it looks like an altar to death. Well, you have a black cat filing its nails, so that could be considered demonic. As your profile picture. I have a black cat, too. <laughs> okay. Why do I start thinking, why does he like me in that self? Because, because you're giving too much and he's not giving enough. You know, you think... You're good for thinking that, but your thought instead should be, I'm not sure if he has good intentions, but I'm going to get the most out of him until he proves otherwise. That's what you need to be thinking. You're too worried about what he is really planning. You need to be, you need to be worried about what you're planning. Okay? So stop. You're thinking backwards once again. <laughs> Thinking backwards, so think, why do I like him and what can I get out of him while he's pretending to like me if he really doesn't like me? How can I get him to do the most until I prove otherwise? You know, if you're going to if you're going to self-sabotage yourself, at least benefit from it. OK. Mm hmm. <laughs> at least you'll get something out of it. Is, it is a symbol of death. A skull is a symbol of death. Mm -hmm. So is a cross. Cross is also a symbol of death. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, a skull is a picture of a, our skeletal system. Exactly. When you go to medical school, you're gonna ask the um, you're gonna ask the professor why there's demonic pictures in the uh the medical book. Why is it 
the amount of pictures in my medical book, my anatomy book. You know how many chemicals are in this page? Do you know y'all chopping down all these trees to make books dip into the ozone layer? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Let's just say me and you might not agree on a lot of things. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe this whole channel promotes Babylon and you supporting it. Welcome to the channel. This whole channel supports Babylon, but yet you support it too. So thank you for supporting Babylon. Death, materialism, self-hate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't recognize it until you experience it, right? Mm hmm. You're 19 and you're honest. Honestly, you want a husband of means by the time you're 22. Is that realistic? Yep. I don't know if you're going to have a husband at 22, but you can have a man that is marriage minded at 22, but he'd probably be a much older. So I wouldn't say you need to be married by 22 because you don't even know what you want by then or who you are. Um. How do you be an, get an average Joe to be your sugar daddy? <laughs> he basically worships me and it's a challenge for me to even find him attractive. You mean average in looks? Three shots of tequila. Don't only go out at night and be in dim lighting. <laughs> you are not in a medical room and those are not medical illustrations. How do you know? How do you know? Maybe I was a mortician and I like reminders of that. Mm hmm Thank you. If you have a problem with it, click off the channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never get married at 22. It's too young. You can get in, you can get engaged or seriously date, but marriage too young. Thank you. Examples of sabotage is being too uh, critical of yourself when you're talking about yourself. Um, Doing too much emotionally, investing too much emotionally in a relationship when they haven't invested anything into you. You know, it's just so many things um, that women do that they're not aware of, like unable to accept compliments, unable to uh, feel good about the relationship and not think that someone's after them for um, or why, you know, why you why do they like me? You know, they're more about benefiting in any way from the relationship or from dating instead of worrying about being rejected so they self-sabotage themselves first. Most women worry so much about being rejected, they actually self-sabotage themselves first so that they don't think it's their, um, that the man is rejecting them. So it's also psychological. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you accept weirdo as a compliment. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have leveled up and you receive lots of attention from men, but you don't get asked out. What should you do? Um, Men can admire what you look like, but if you don't fit into their world or you don't get approval from, you know, whoever's around them, they're not going to ask you out. So men might find you attractive, but if society as a whole doesn't find you attractive, they don't want to be seen out public with you. So 
that's a that's a one thing. Um, if you're overly done, if you're if you have you know if you don't fit into their world, it's not going to be easy. That's why I would say go out and people watch before you go out freestyling so that you can know how to dress, how to talk, act, walk, and to fit in so that you are seen as able to fit in to that person's world. You know? <laughs> Take you to a guard. What's overly done? Like if you're if you're in a nice area and you have and you have like a giant wig or a blonde or clothes out there with glitter and stuff on them and eyebrows that look like you drew them in with a sharpie mark, that's too much. Okay. That's not what gets attention, uh good attention. You know what I'm saying? You have to fit into that environment. Uh, if you're if you're looking good and you know classy and you know not overly done but not underdone, that's when you get the most you know dates when people feel like you fit in. You, you know. Mm hmm. <sighs> Can you bounce back from a bit of self-sabotage if you stop altogether and never repeat it? Yeah. But then most people, most people get turned off when you put yourself down. It's like most people almost want to not talk to you anymore after you put your own self down. So you got to stop doing that. Mm hmm. Old man is offering this much a month, but he expects sex. How do you get the money? With <laughs> have an unexpected. It have an unexpected emergency <laughs> when it comes to that time. Mm -hmm. If you don't have high self-esteem on your own, you need to create it, you know, you need to only create it and only think positive thoughts about yourself and don't care what other people um, say. It's all in your vibration and your attitude, you know, and then improve all you can improve so that your self-esteem is high naturally. Yeah. If you if you build it and you are if you have low self-esteem to begin with and you build self-esteem, you already would have had it if you knew how to build it. You know, so whatever you're insecure about, work on it until you're no longer insecure about it. OK. Right. If you have low self-esteem because of something that you can change, then change it. If you can't change it, then accept it and love it and make it your own and make other people love it by accepting it and flaunting it. Okay. <laughs> right. That's all you got to do. Why do people call confident people mean though? Because they can't be confident. And confident people don't take anything and any crap that's thrown at them because they don't have to. You see? Somebody who's not confident will take any piece of crap you throw at them and then say thank you and beg for more. So no. I'd rather be mean than be seen as will accept anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, I'm going to be nice and accept everything you give me. Oh, thank you so much. Is this a bowl of poop? Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, what did you bring me today? Oh, a bill that you need paid. Oh, okay, I'll take that too. You know, who are you now being mean to? Yourself. <laughs> You're being mean to yourself now. So guess what? Either you be mean to them or you're mean to yourself. How about that? <laughs> um, all these women trying to find out how to get married. <laughs> I've I've noticed that men only marry women that they can't live without. And that means they can't imagine you with another man. And that you're impressive and that they feel like they have accomplished something by even having you. So if that's if you want to get married, you got to be those things. Right. If you already gave him some, start over with somebody else. He's not going to treat you the same. He already got what he wanted. Okay. Give him some time. Ghost him. Let him find you. Call him. Let him call you again when he wants some. Then you try to start over. If he's not trying to start over with you because he's already gotten it, then great. Nothing lost, but you don't try to make it work. He needs to start all over, you know, and then you start all over and don't give it to him this time ever until he has earned it, which means you have something in your pocket and he's invested into you a lot. When you're rich, you will go back to locks. Exactly. Mm hmm. What if he doesn't care about sex? What can you use as leverage? Secrets. Get him to open up to you. Um. Well, I have to go, but I'm not going to stay on here forever. But thank you all for watching. I'm going to let you all go back and watch the beginning so that y'all can get all the self-sabotaging methods that women tend to do. Y'all can figure it out. And I'm getting ready to go. I gotta go out to shopping. To go shopping for the last few things before Thanksgiving. <laughs> I will. Bye.